SFU has already had to make tons of sacrifices because of the budget cuts. They've cut TA positions, they've cut staff positions, they've cut professors, they've cut support staff, they've increased class size. Undergrad students have little individual attention paid to them. Graduate students get no funding. It's an all-round bad situation, and this is only going to make things worse. My name is Rob Clift. I'm the executive director of the Confederation of University Faculty Associations of British Columbia. <laughs> this isn't the first time, and I expect, unfortunately, it won't be the last time that students, staff, faculty, uh, the whole SFU community has to get together in order to let government know that they've made a bad decision. You see here right in front of you, number one. 80 faculty and staff positions are going to be eliminated, or actually in the process of being eliminated. People have already left, positions are being closed down, hiring isn't happening. SFU is the forerunner of what's happening, what will be happening elsewhere in the province. For a particular set of reasons, SFU has uh, had it hardest and hit first amongst the universities, but if it doesn't get fixed now, you're not, uh, what's happening here is going to happen at all the other universities. We're here to tell the provincial government that you did it wrong, it's not too late to fix it, and moreover, why don't you look towards the future and put all the universities, colleges, and institutes on a sound financial footing? Now, we're really fortunate today to have, in addition to all of you, we also have some MLAs up here. Rod Shohan, the MLA for Burnaby Edmonds. Rod. Rob Fleming, the MLA for Victoria Hillside and the official opposition critic for advanced education. We have Carol James, leaders of the official opposition for British Columbia. So thank you to the MLAs for coming today and showing your support for SFU. We do appreciate it a great deal. So without further ado, I'll introduce to you the speakers. Uh, we'll start with Bob Hackett from the SFU Faculty Association. Well, hello SFU, and on behalf of the Faculty Association, welcome to this historic event. Now, the, the decline in funding for public uh, universities is a long-term issue uh, in terms of real per-student funding. It's been going down really since the 1990s, but last March's cuts to promised operating budgets were an especially hard blow, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what the consequences are. Right now, SFU is in the process of terminating 80 positions, 30 faculty and 50 other staff, and that's what these good people here standing in front of you with numbers represent. But it includes likely fewer courses being offered, larger classes on average, longer completion time for degrees, less contact between professors and students, whole programs being potentially cut, fewer library acquisitions, less staff to help students and professors do their work, and that's not to mention the time that we've spent since March scrambling to adjust to the unexpected cuts. But it's not just about us. It's not just about those of us, the hundreds of us who are here today. There's a bigger picture. There's the economy. During a time of downturn, thousands of BC workers are going to go, be going back to colleges and universities to upgrade their credentials. We should be planning for growth, not retrenchment. As your sign says, public education is the best economic recovery tool. It's, it's also about democracy. We need independent, strong, healthy public universities to do independent research, accountable to broader publics, but not beholden to narrow government or private sector agendas. Okay. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do about it? Well, uh, this is not a partisan event, but I do want to thank the official opposition for committing itself to restoring the $50 million that was taken out of the system last March. And I want to challenge the government uh, to do that same thing, to do the right thing uh, in its new upcoming provincial budget coming down on February 17th, just 13 days from now. And we will be looking over their shoulders. Finally, 
Finally, we will remember at election time, the provincial elections coming up in May, and I want, I think we have a chance here to send a message to all the politicians in Victoria that the more than 25,000 students, staff, and faculty at Simon Fraser University will be looking for the real friends of public universities in BC. Thank you. All right, next we have Joanne Field from QP. The problem is that these 80 people do not just represent what has been happening at SFU. For the past eight to 10 years, at the very least, we have been losing staff components all across the board due to the lack of funding, chronic underfunding by the provincial government. As well, these 80 people have to stand for those positions that we were never able to actually create. We all know that the university ex has expanded by leaps and bounds with physical campuses, with departments and programs. And in most of those cases, we didn't have the funding to create positions to staff those. And now it's actually come back at us with the last provincial budget, with the additional cuts that brought us up to nine million in a shortfall last year, that we are facing a very, very grave situation. And as has been said already, if we don't make all of our politicians very much aware of this situation, there is no other consequence that can absolutely happen to us except that the face of post-secondary education in British Columbia will have to be totally changed. And it certainly will not be universal, and it certainly will not be totally public as a university should be. I thank you all for coming today, and I hope that you take this message back, and I hope you make your voices loud and clear between now and May 14th that post-secondary funding for SFU and for all the universities and colleges in this province must be addressed. It must be changed. We need to have sufficient funds to educate all of us. Thank you. Okay, now Scott Drake from the Teaching Support Staff Union. Last spring, Gordon Campbell and the Liberal government cut $6 million from SFU funding, and the February 17th budget further threatens to deplete this funding. These cuts, combined with chronic underfunding, are attacking public post-secondary education at the very moment when we need to invest in higher education for everyone. But we need the administration of SFU to stand side by side with us. SFU is one of the top research universities in the country. Now the TSSU rep represents supporting staff up at supporting staff up here at SFU. Specifically, we're the most visibly te teaching assistants who run your tutorials, we're sessional instructors who conduct classes, we're the people that students encounter on the front lines of the university. Now many of our members are both workers at the university and students at the university. And what this means is that we're uniquely positioned to feel the impacts of these cuts. The SFU's influence isn't confined to just a hill in Burnaby. Our former students and our graduates live and work in BC. Undercutting, underfunding public education, Mr. Campbell, hurts BC. The Liberals are exacerbating this crisis by continuing to underfund at precisely the moment when investment in public post-secondary education is most necessary. Now, it's well known that in economic downturns, people return to school as a form of retraining or just a further education. What kind of message is a premier sending when he cuts the very infrastructure that makes this possible? The worker shortages in health care and trades are a direct result of this lack of vision. What we need to do is learn from the lessons of the past. We need to learn them now. 
This starts with a commitment from the government. Now, it's one thing to say that we don't have the money, but that, in this case, would be a lie. When we see funding increased exponentially for a two-week circus, when we see funding increased for public-private partnerships to the benefit of private corporations, we know this is a lie. Put the money back where it belongs. Invest in public post-secondary education. Let this be a reminder that we are voters and we'll be watching the budget. As F you, Mr. Campbell, Mr. Cole, demands that you invest in public post-secondary education now. I take it you agree. <laughs> All right, next up we have Graham Lyons from the Graduate Student Society. Graham. I am a representative for the Graduate Student Society here at SFU, and I am here to talk about the chronic underfunding here at SFU, to speak for graduate students who are systematically ignored here at SFU, to demand that administrators stop the paper shuffling here at SFU, and that the province of British Columbia restore funding that is already inadequate for students, staff, and professors here at SFU. We received this letter on January the 22nd from Murray Cole, Minister of Advanced Education and Labour Market Development, and in it he claims that the provincial government has increased funding to SFU by 23% since 2004. Now let me tell you, let me tell you what that means on the ground. On the ground, the provincial government at the same time also demanded an increase in student enrollment, which means that the per student funding has actually gone down since 2004. On the ground, this increase in students means larger class sizes, fewer course selections, and more and more overworked teaching assistants and professors since 2004. On the ground, grad students have been forced to scrounge for supervisors, struggle through administrative red tape without staff support, and squeeze into offices too small for the six or eight students who use them since 2004. On the ground, graduate students have had to fight with other graduate students for shrinking amounts of funding since 2004. This letter tells us the Ministry of Advanced Education is actually the Ministry of Advanced Education and Labour Market Development. Market development? Is that what we call a university these days? <laughs> Whatever happened to the notion of a university where ideas and critical thinking, the backbone of a good democracy, came before skills and jobs and markets? In this letter, Murray Cole tells us that university administrators have the responsibility to make the university work. As we know, the university administration tells us that the provincial government sets unrealistic enrollment targets and gives un inadequate funding, and students and staff at SFU are caught in the middle of this merry-go-round. As the provincial government asks universities to do more with less, the university responds by seeking financial support from private sources. A decade-long agenda in Victoria comes down the pike as an unacceptable last resort for SFU administrators. But the real problem here is that the Ministry of Advanced Education is no longer about education, but about labour, about the market. It is about privatisation, and what we are seeing here with the slow and constant attacks on our budget is the slow and steady privatisation of the entire public education system. Save SFU? Yes, but save SFU as a public institution. As public funding is replaced by private funding, the student suffers, the staff person suffers, the professor suffers, and ultimately the future prospects for our province suffers. I am here to demand restoration of 1,500 unfunded graduate student seats here at SFU, to demand restoration of $6 million cut last spring here at SFU, to demand per-student funding that keeps up with the economic times here at SFU. But I am also here to demand that public institutions in this province get their due, that public assets are not sold off to private interests, that university administrators and elected representatives take responsibility for post-secondary education and refuse to pass the buck. Here at SFU, I am here to demand a vision for our public institutions in this province built on an honest engagement with the people that make that vision a reality. 
Thank you. Bob mentioned earlier that he's been here, he's been here since a student, since 1969. He's never seen the campus community come together quite like this. And uh, this number of people getting together, and I have to concur. You know, I've, I've been involved with SFU for well over 20 years in various capacities, and uh, you know, ain't seen nothing like this today. It's been a long, long time. Thank you everyone for coming. <laughs> It's, it's not unreasonable, as you've heard, it's not unreasonable to want an accessible, high-quality post-secondary education. It's not only something you want, we want, it's something British Columbians want.